These are the seven fastest ways to lower your blood sugar levels naturally. Nothing else comes close to it. And one of them is actually as effective as diabetes medications. And I'm not talking about extreme diets, fasting for 24 hours, or drinking magic potions. These are science-backed strategies used in clinical randomized controlled trials to improve insulin sensitivity lower fasting blood sugar, and help you regain control fast. So if you're getting crazy spikes after meals, or your A1C is creeping up every time that you go to the doctor, or you just feel tired, frustrated, or stuck, this video is for you. So let's dive in into the seven research-backed ways to lower blood sugar levels fast, starting with the one that works instantly. Number one, the instant fix, also known as the 15 minute contraction mediated glucose uptake hack. Here's what you're gonna do for this to work. The moment that you finish eating, go on a walk. Don't even think about it. Not a marathon, not a hike, just 15 to 20 minutes of casual walking. You can do this on a treadmill at home or go on a walk around the block. And here's a key detail that most people don't know. When your leg muscles contract by walking, they can pull glucose out of the bloodstream without the need of insulin. Normally, insulin has to act like a key that opens the lock of the cell door so glucose can go in. But during movement, that door opens automatically no need for an insulin key. Muscle contractions activate a completely separate pathway that moves glucose transporters to the outermost layer of the cell. These glucose transporters act like little boats that facilitate the diffusion of glucose from the bloodstream and into the muscle cell. It's called contraction-mediated glucose uptake, and it's just like flipping on a vacuum to suck sugar out of the bloodstream. This works even if you're insulin resistant. So you may be asking yourself, when should I walk to get the most out of this mechanism? The answer is simple, when your blood sugar is at its highest, which for most people, especially those with insulin resistant, tends to be after meals. As a matter of fact, a 2017 randomized crossover trial found that taking short walks after meals was more effective at lowering post-meal blood sugar than doing one longer 45-minute walk once a day. And it didn't lower blood sugar just after eating. Over time, those repeated reductions in post-meal blood sugar spikes led to overall better blood sugar control, including improvements in A1C levels, also known as your average blood sugar levels. The study concluded that moderate intensity brisk walking for 15 minutes after each meal is more beneficial to control blood glucose in patients with type two diabetes mellitus as compared to routine 45 minute walk at stretch. This is so simple and accessible, yet it's one of the most overlooked hacks. Here's a pro tip, if you cannot walk after every single one of your meals, do it at least after your largest meal of the day. This beneficial effect compounds over time. Also, if going outside is not possible or you don't have enough time, then getting one of those portable walking pads will make this much, much easier for you to stay consistent. Number two, the brake pedal on digestion, also known as acetic acid, before meals. This strategy is deceptively simple, but when used correctly, it can meaningfully reduce blood sugar spikes. It's not flashy, it's not new, and it's definitely not a cure-all, but the data behind it is surprisingly solid. Using about two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar diluted in eight ounces of water and taken with meals has been shown to improve blood sugar control, especially after meals and fasting blood sugar. In this 
eight-week randomized controlled trial, adults with type 2 diabetes who drank two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar saw significant reductions in post-meal blood sugar levels and A1C compared with a healthy diet alone. They also had improvements in their cholesterol profile, including lower LDL and better cholesterol ratios. So what's the mechanism of action here? Well, apple cider vinegar contains acidic acid, which slows down stomach emptying and boosts your muscles ability to absorb glucose. Now, here's something important to consider. Don't drink apple cider vinegar straight, always dilute it in water. And even then, the very thing that makes this hack work, which is the high acidity of vinegar, is also what could be detrimental in the long term. Daily use of this hack can lead to low potassium levels, potentially causing bone loss and osteoporosis. It can also lead to throat irritation or burns. So moderation and dilution are key. This is not something that you wanna do every single day of your life. It's not meant for that. Some people tolerate it better, but I wouldn't recommend it long-term. Number three, around the clock blood sugar clearance, also known as Berberine. Unlike apple cider vinegar, which mainly helps for the first few hours after a meal, berberine acts at a deeper level. Berberine is often described as an around-the-clock blood sugar optimizer because it improves insulin sensitivity and glucose handling throughout the day not just during digestion. You've probably heard me talk about the power of berberine to lower blood sugar levels fast. It truly is one of those things that seems a little too good to be true. But the science behind it doesn't lie. Berberine has been shown in over 50 randomized trials to lower A1C, reduce fasting glucose, improve insulin resistance, and support better lipid levels. It's so powerful that it's often referred as nature's metformin. And metformin is a powerful diabetes drug, in case you didn't know. In this study, efficacy of berberine in patients with type 2 diabetes, researchers found that compared with metformin, berberine exhibited an identical effect in the regulation of glucose metabolism, such as HbA1c, fasting blood glucose, post-meal blood glucose, fasting insulin, and postprandial insulin. In the regulation of lipid metabolism, berberine activity is better than metformin. By week 13, triglycerides and total cholesterol in the berberine group had decreased and were significantly lower than in the metformin group. So what is the mechanism of action here? Well, it activates AMPK your body's internal energy regulator, turning on fat burning and improving glucose clearance. That's an oversimplification, but I won't go into it in this video. If you want to know everything about berberine, go ahead and watch this video linked right here. Now, if you're interested in taking berberine, just know that you have to take at least 1000 milligrams of active compounds per day for it to be beneficial. This one right here, Jade Supplements Pure Berberine, is 1200 milligrams per serving. So each capsule contains 600 milligrams. Based on all of the research that we have done on berberine, we actually recommend 600 milligrams in the morning and 600 milligrams in the evening. This will give you around the clock coverage and you're gonna be supporting proper blood sugar levels while you sleep and during the day. Now, here's a kicker, which brings me to hack number four, magnesium supplementation. Many people living with high blood sugar are deficient in magnesium to begin with, and magnesium is crucial for insulin signaling. It's actually required for insulin to attach to its receptor and move glucose from the bloodstream and into your cells. So if you're magnesium deficient, none of these hacks that I'm talking about would even work in the first place. The scary part is that magnesium deficiency is widespread in the US, with studies showing around half to as high as 60% of American adults not meeting daily requirements, making it a significant public health concern. Here's what matters the most. Low magnesium equals poor blood sugar control, 
poor sleep and increased insulin resistance. So before you start implementing any of these hacks, ask yourself if you're eating enough magnesium rich foods. Things like hemp seeds, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, quinoa, spinach, and black beans, to name a few. Go ahead and comment guide below, and I'll send you a free meal plan with magnesium-rich foods. You can also go ahead and supplement with magnesium glycinate, which I take one hour before bed every night. Number five, muscular insulin sensitivity. If you want to go ahead and lower your blood sugar levels fast, and keep them down, you need to train your muscles with resistance training every other day. No way around it, especially your lower body muscles. Your glutes, quads, and hamstrings are the largest glucose absorbing tissues in your body. They act like massive glucose vacuums. When you resistance train those muscles, three important things happen. First, you burn through stored glucose during the workout itself. Second, muscle contraction activates these glucose transporters that help pull glucose out of the bloodstream and into the muscle cell. This is called contraction-mediated glucose uptake, as you already know. And third, and this is the key part, after training, your muscles become more insulin sensitive for 24 48, or even up to 72 hours. In this study, update on the effects of physical activity on insulin sensitivity in humans, it was concluded that physical activity has both immediate, meaning acute, and longer-term effects on insulin sensitivity. The immediate effects are the direct result of a single exercise bout and may be evident during and or for up to 72 hours post-exercise. That means that the same amount of insulin that your pancreas is releasing works better. More glucose gets pulled out of the bloodstream and blood sugar stays in control throughout the day. This is why resistance training every other day is so effective. You're essentially keeping your muscles in a high uptake insulin sensitive state. And this effect has nothing to do with weight loss. Even a single lower body session can improve glucose that same day and for the next two days. That's impressive. And that's why consistency matters more than intensity. And you don't actually need fancy equipment. Focus on squats, lunges, step ups, leg presses, and resistance bands or body weight exercises. Train every other day, 30 to 40 minutes is plenty. I'll go ahead and leave a link below this video with a free resistance bands exercise routine for you. It will tell you exactly what to do on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays your resistance training days. All you need is resistance bands and 20 to 30 minutes of your time. Number six, drink green tea. On the days where your fasting blood sugar runs high, try green tea instead of coffee, especially in the mornings. Green tea contains EGCG, a bioactive compound that improves how your body handles glucose at a cellular level. Here's what EGCG actually does. It improves insulin sensitivity in your muscles and liver cells. It reduces liver glucose output which directly influences your fasting blood sugar levels, and it lowers inflammation and oxidative stress, which are linked to insulin resistance. As a matter of fact, multiple human studies have shown that regular green tea consumption is associated with lower fasting blood glucose and improved insulin response in people with insulin resistance and type two diabetes, especially when used consistently. Another advantage is that green tea provides gentle stimulation without the cortisol release that some people experience when they drink a coffee. This matters because higher cortisol release means higher blood sugar levels, especially in the morning. So here's how to use it. Drink green tea plain 
or lightly sweetened with monk fruit and use it with or before breakfast. And it's especially helpful on days where your numbers are running higher than usual. This isn't about quitting coffee forever. It's about using green tea as a strategic tool when your fasting blood sugar levels are running high. Number seven, hydration. Your kidneys depend on it. This one seems basic, but it's critical. When you're dehydrated, blood sugar levels become more concentrated. At the same time, your kidneys are under more strain because they rely on adequate fluid to regulate blood glucose properly. Your kidneys constantly filter glucose from the blood, reabsorb what the body needs, and only spill excess glucose into the urine when blood sugar levels are too high. That entire process depends on sufficient water. High blood sugar also causes increased urination, which leads to water loss and electrolyte loss. That same dehydration can push blood sugar levels even higher, creating a vicious cycle. Staying well hydrated helps maintain normal blood volume, supports kidney function, and prevents unnecessary concentration of glucose in the bloodstream. Aim for steady hydration throughout the day, not chugging fluids all at once at night. So to recap, here are the seven fastest ways to lower your blood sugar levels. These are not trends, they're not extreme diets, and they're not magic tricks. These are physiology-driven tools that lower your blood sugar because they make your body use blood sugar more efficiently. Number one, the instant fix, post-meal walks. Eat, then walk for 15 to 20 minutes. Number two, the digestive break, apple cider vinegar. Two tablespoons diluted in water, with meals. Think of this as a situational tool, not a lifestyle. Number three, berberine. This is one of the most powerful non-pharmaceutical tools that we have at our disposal. 600 milligrams in the morning with food and 600 milligrams in the evening with food. So a total of 1200 milligrams per day. We recommend Jade Supplements Pure Berberine. Number four, magnesium. This is truly the missing link. If you're magnesium deficient, none of this works well. First, Fix this or you are fighting an uphill battle. Number five, resistance training. Train your muscles every other day, especially your legs, and stay insulin sensitive for 24 to 72 hours after your workout. Number six, green tea. On high fasting blood sugar days, swap your coffee for green tea, simple. And number seven, hydration. High blood sugar causes fluid loss and dehydration leads to even higher blood sugar levels. Break that cycle. So here's the takeaway. You don't need to do all seven at once. Pick two or three, start this week and stack them over time. Go ahead and check the description below for the links to the free meal plans, to the free workout guides and for the supplements that I talked about today. If this helped you, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, or share this video with somebody who needs the help. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.